Yo, 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 what is going on, ROK Familia? It is your boy BN, aka Mr. Kingdom Builder, and we are back again giving you some of the best quality information and content videos that ROK has to offer. We're going to be touching on how to be an officer today. What is everything that really goes into it? What are some of the realistic expectations? How much time are you going to spend? What are you actually doing as an officer? And how can you best support your leader and the alliance as an officer of such? Before we dive into everything, of course, make sure you guys sub, like, ring the notification bell, and if you want to join and be a part of our conversation, hit up our Discord. You can find that in the description and pinned comment down below. Okay, so let's start off first with describing, right, what is an officer? Well, an officer essentially is a extension of the leader, right? You are there in, in large part to be a right to be delegated to right for tasks to share the load with not only the lead but the other officers that are there as well and making sure that you as an officer right bear in mind when you become an officer if you want to be an officer and and i'm probably hammering away the really the, the bulk of the most important thing i think here in the beginning is that keep in mind you're joining an alliance you're not just becoming a generalized officer in the game, right? You are joining an alliance that has a leader, and that leader hopefully has a vision. They have a plan. They have a way of doing things. And as such, there are common things that we'll talk about here throughout the video that you're just going to do, right? Daily tasks, basics, right? You'll do some extra things depending on what your role is, right? A lot of these are standard. But the most important thing is to have a level of respect, and professionalism when you are an officer of an alliance right you are not an officer to do your own thing right you are an officer because you hopefully want to support not only the current leader but you also want to support the players there right by allowing for there to be more people in an officer position outside of the lead that can help doing tasks and getting things done throughout the day, right? So people are on to do some of these things. And we'll, we'll touch on some of these as we go. The first thing that we're going to touch on, right, is I think it's very important to understand that as an officer, you're going to spend a decent amount of time in-game, on and off, right, depending on obviously how much time you have available. Some of these things will be such as daily tasks, right? We'll kind of jump into these one by one. Now, when you get online some of the things that you're probably going to take a look at first will be checking your chats right you're going to want to take a look at any uh for example right we'll take a look at the group chats right so if we have uh right you'll, you'll probably take a look at your alliance chat if you have some group chats set up you'll take a look at those you'll probably get caught up on your officer chat because you want to make sure that you're up to date and you haven't missed anything right these are probably some of the most important things to really check first and this is just applying for in game You'll probably end up going over to Discord as well. And on Discord, again, if you have one, you'll probably check your officer group chat, whether that's a separate custom group chat that you have for the lead and the officers, or if you have it on your Alliance Discord, right? You'll want to check that and make sure you're just caught up on the most important places, right? Which is your officers chats first, then you'll probably go to your group chats, then you'll check your Alliance chat, right? And here this is mainly to make sure that you are staying uh, that you again like we said you're up to date you haven't missed anything and then you kind of start getting into those things so one of the things that you want to make sure you're doing is checking these chats to make sure that there are no unanswered questions right part of what you're doing as an officer is to also support the players by giving them good and more importantly consistent information right this is one of the most important things when you're going around answering questions is that you want to make sure that the answers you're giving to something are lining up with the answers that other officers are giving right and that they're consistent with what the direction or the policy for whatever you're answering on right that has been explained or has been laid out by the leader now, this obviously doesn't apply to everything, right? You can answer general in-game questions, and those are things outside of answering alliance-specific questions, right, that, again, 
acting as an extension of the lead to make sure that if the lead isn't on, you're there to help answer questions as well, that your answers line up with the answers that the leader would give, and then helping out with general questions as well, right? So kind of having a, a foundational level of knowledge when it comes to playing can and, and probably is important, but this will help you in building as an officer good rapport with the player base and also show to the leader and I'm sure to your officer peers or colleagues in this case right, that you are a contributing member at that level. The next thing that you'll probably uh, be doing as well, and these are kind of general things that you'll be checking, is tech. You'll want to make sure that there's always recommended tech or that you have a plan for what tech is going to be uh, next, right? So an example here would be, right, here's a, a brand new alliance that I'm in. Let's say that, you know, Great Alliance finished. Well, you would come on here and probably go over to Together We Rise and then, you you know, have a little button up here, right, where it says Mark is recommended, right? So you would do the recommended tech or if you need to switch it, right, you can go over whatever it may be. But you need to make sure that there's always recommended tech that's going on so that way players are not um, potentially donating in places that they shouldn't be donating in that is just kind of wasting tech points so again making sure that there's always a recommended tech knowing what the next techs are or figuring that out before the situation comes up so you can always stay ahead of those things is going to be really important then the other thing that you'll do, and I know we mentioned this briefly before, when it comes to checking chats, you also want to check your DMs, right? Have you got individually messaged, whether that be in-game or if it's on Discord, right? You want to take time to answer those messages. And then, of course, right, if they're ones you can answer, fantastic. If they're messages that you probably need to direct to a certain uh, player, right, that just has a position or if they have a certain role, then obviously do that accordingly. Then we get to uh, checking applications, right? So this is another thing that you'll do for if players are coming in and they're doing recruiting, right? You may end up having to come here. Oh, excuse me. I don't think it's members. Oh, gosh. Where, where am I? Oh, it's not settings. I'm totally blind here. No. Wait. I totally thought that was because I'm actually... Oh, that's just a search. I'm so blind right now. Here we go. Settings and approval. Okay. So you'll go here, right, to the application list, and you'll have to obviously check and vet people. Now, most of the time, if you're accepting players or declining, is that you want to have a, a guideline already in place, right? You want to hopefully have something that the leader has given that says, hey, if we get these people that apply, we can accept. Or maybe it's as simple as, hey, anyone that applies auto accept until we have one spot left, keep that spot open, then we'll kind of vet everyone appropriately. Maybe they say something like, well, hey, only accept people that are 200K or 10 million pound or above, right? Only accept people if they message us first, <clears throat> or maybe they'll say, reach out to every single person that applies, you know, ask them why they're applying, or maybe you're just confirming, right? Maybe you're waiting for certain players to join, so you're just waiting for their applications to show up, then you can automatically accept, but have a game plan, on how you're going to do that, because for the most part, when you're starting off, when you're starting out in alliance, it's pretty easy to just invite a bunch of people, right, and and get a lot of people coming into the alliance in the beginning. But once you kind of start, you know, getting past that beginning stage, you really want to have a good game plan for how you're going to do those things, so that way you don't miss out on potential opportunities, and then you don't lose out on players that might be waiting too long for you to accept them or to potentially invite people. That kind of goes hand in hand. The next thing here is going to be kind of conducting your role tasks. So whatever role you have as an officer, right? Let's say you're doing diplomacy, you're doing war, maybe you're doing recruiting, you're doing planning, uh, which could be something like flagging. Uh, maybe you're doing events, right? So you're kind of in charge of having like fun internal events, right? These are just some things to name. You want to make sure that you are up to date on what your role is, right? And then you're also, and I want to point this out because this is, and I'll, and I'll hammer this home again later, Communication is one of the most, if not the most important thing that you can do with your management team. Uh, and this is just generally. But if you have a role for your alliance, you need to make sure that you are communicating that role to, uh, I should say to your lead, but also, but more specifically in your alliance chat, right? Or sorry, in your officer chat, whether it's on Discord or in-game. And if there's something to update the leader on, you should update the leader on, right? Let them know, hey, this is what's happening. This is what I'm doing right now, right, to address it um, or take care of it. And then this is what we have coming up, 
right? And eventually when you get to a certain point where you've done some things and you could say, hey, here's what we've completed. This is what we have going on and this is what we have coming up, right? And that's really important because one, it communicates and hopefully uh, when you're in a role, you your leader would have explained like, hey, this is how we're doing our roles, right in in the alliance sometimes those roles can vary just depending on the kingdom situation right are you a solo alliance are you a part of our group right so do they have kind of global reps and then you know you might not need a lot of roles for your specific alliance if so but if you're just a solo alliance then yeah, you're probably going to want to have multiple roles for officers so they can handle those things in case situations come up but have a game plan communicate talk those things out so you can all be on the same page things will flow more effortlessly when you do it that way then we'll talk about the calendar. I think this is very important if you're an officer because it also helps you lay out and know what's upcoming. And a good example, a good way to find this is if we click on the parchment here with the nail, you can go up here to event calendar. And here you can see all the events that are coming up, right? For at least upcoming for that week. And you can click on them, right? It'll give you a brief description. When the event comes up, it'll tell you a little bit more about it. But, and again, remember, if you don't know an event, excuse me, you can always Google it, right? You can go online, you can search it up. Every single event has already been documented. If a new event comes out, it's documented pretty quickly by the community, right? Which is great. So you can always get information on what is the event? What rewards is it giving? How can I maximize the event? And then you can come up with a game plan on how to write a mail out to players and give them information before the event comes up. Um, I think one of the best things that alliances can do is kind of send a mail out, tell people to start it, and then where you basically say, hey, each day of the week, these are the events that are coming out. You can check the calendar. And then here's a quick tip or two on each of the events in order for you to maximize and things that you might want to be looking for. Trust me, if you do a weekly newsletter, especially on the day that the, that the new stuff comes out, which I think is going to be like every Friday, at least based on how this looks, then... People in your players in your alliance will love that. Absolutely right. If they get a weekly newsletter that just says, "Hey, here's what I can maximize for the week," right? And it can also help them plan things out because pl some players might read an alliance mail before they go do the event calendar, right? And sometimes vice versa. <clears throat> but just staying on top of that can be really important. <clears throat> Next thing here we're going to talk about is building flags. Now I know I touched on this a little bit in uh, the leader video. But I do think it's important to know how to build flags as an officer, right? So an example of this would be, you know, again, even though I, I just have this account here, right? One of the things that you'll want to do when you're building flags, and bear in mind, right, that we do not have um, enough. But I can place a flag here just to kind of show you. The important thing here is that you want to be sure that everyone knows where the next flag has to go, right? So if you're following, and I'll just zoom out here to give you an example, if you're following a certain resource path, you need to know exactly where you're going, right? If you are, for example, have a flag here where my city is, you need to know, okay, well, hey, we're going to go over here so we can start getting some gold, we can get some of the food, um, right? we can get some stone, uh, it looks like there's a wood, a wood or two here, right? So you need to make sure that you know, like, hey, we're working, you know, today we're, we're going to continue working northwest to go over here to this gate, right? Or, hey, we're going to start working, uh, well, I'm in zone two right now, but let's just say if I go over here to like a zone one area, which is really easy, I can say, okay, well, you know, we're going to start working towards, you know, this altar and this sanctum, right, today. That That's our goal, right? While trying to connect to as many of the RSS nodes as we can. Right, or the deposit tiles. And, and so again, have a game plan. Know where you're going. Be up to date on what the next flag is because you want to make sure that flags do not go, all right, uh, I don't want to say unused, even though I guess that's probably okay to, uh, okay to say as well, but you want to make sure they're having back-to-back -back flags being built, right? Or whenever you're able to build your next flag, that is when you want to do it, especially early on and ultimately throughout, right, up until you're doing LT and probably up until KVK really as well. You want to make sure that you're trying to build as many flags, right, have good resource ratio income and always have those things going, uh, building back-to-back. -back. Okay.
Next here is going to be setting up markers. So I think markers are really important and you can use markers for numerous things. But as an officer, you need to be able to either create, modify or remove markers and staying on top of them, right? Especially if you're going to be laying a flag down. I will give you an example. Let's just say that for whatever reason, um, we need to lay a flag here. Obviously, you can't do that um, with it being at an objective, but we'll just use this as an example. So I'll click on this. And then I'll place, you see the flag here, it's in purple. And then I can designate. Now, unfortunately, right, I think you can only have 10 markers, right, that you can use at a time for your alliance. But an example would be, right, let's say I, I place a marker here, we're going to build a flag, right? Or let me see if I can just find a random player. I bet you I probably can. I just got to look around for a brief moment here. Let me see. I have to be able to find a scraggly, scraggly person. Come on, there can't be... There can't be that many people. Or here, here, better yet, let's do this. I'll say we're going to place a flag near this cropland, right? So we'll click here. And then I probably won't use the attack one. Or I'll, probably use, I'll probably use something else standardly, like one of these. And I'll just say something like, you know, I'll do like one troop slow build. Or I'll do, you know, fast like a NASCAR. Nice car. All right, fast like a NASCAR. Bam. You know, and just, it's just something funny, right? I, th I think sometimes adding some jokes and some humors when you're building, that can help out a lot, um, right? Or you can just keep it super simple and you can just be, you know, you could just say fast build, bam, okay? And then you're done, right? You go confirm, I got my marker <clears throat> laid down and you can see how it looks, even if you're zooming out of the way. And this is also something that's really important. And we'll probably talk about this when we do like the member, right? How, how you can be a good contributing um, and valued member of an alliance. But even at times it, it can be good to check what markers are up even when you get in right so that should be something you do as well as checking what markers are up for the alliance and then again making sure that you are adjusting markers right so in this case you know i'll delete it because there's just nothing going on here but being able to modify these delete create that is something that you need to be able to do as an officer and it's very important okay Next thing here is going to be tech audit. Now, I know I touched on this in the leader video, but I think it's really important for officers to just know how to do a tech audit, right? And this is extremely important, and I actually hope that this will, that this will eventually become a norm within Kingdom Builders. Because currently, across multiple Kingdom Builders, doing a tech audit is arguably the most surefire way on how to determine true activity. Um, in, in, in a sense, right? Um, you Unless you're max tech, that's different. But if you are not max tech, right, you're not max level max tech on everything in your alliance, doing tech audits is really your bread and butter, right, for kind of gauging these true values. And how you essentially do this is you go into the alliance, you go to settings, you go to rankings, you go to mad scientist, right? And then you'll see, right, this is a global, a global tech. As long as they're in the alliance, it will calculate donations right and you can see here they donate right to some extent this doesn't reset right i believe unless you leave the alliance then you rejoin so the thing you do with this is every couple days right depending on what stage or what area or what timeline you're in in the kingdom's development my recommendation is every like two or three days right you do a tech audit and you'll just have someone go through each person's name on a spreadsheet and you just do a column for, and you, the, you put the date of the column at the top and you go through everyone's name, right? And you just write down what their tech donations are at, right? And, and, and then you figure out, right, how long does it take for one tech, one tech donation to reset? And then you just figure that out from there. And I don't know if we can even, let me see here if I can even find that out, right? So I'll do a donation, right? So next chance, oh, wow, so I was actually writing the leader video, right? It is every 30 minutes. So in that case, right, you, you'll have 20 tech donations, every 10 hours um, at, at least based on this i don't know if this is going to change or it gets longer but at least based on this right the, the important thing is you want to know how long does it take to generate one tech donation and then you figure out the total time for max tech donations right so you figure out the total time that it takes to do 20 and then beyond that you figure out how many tech donations can someone technically do within a 24 hour period that's that's the sweet sweet number there that number tells you how many tech donations you can do per day 
So then you can come up with a gauge and have an idea on the amount of text that someone should have, right? Or someone should have plus, like whatever their plus minus is, that they should have increased their tech from the previous day or however many days ago, right? So let's just say as an example that you could do 40 texts a day, right? If three days have passed, you should have something close to 120 plus tech donations from whatever your previous tech donation count is at. That is a good way to indicate if someone only has 20, well, they're probably not, they've probably donated about two and a half days worth, you know, or sorry, a half a day worth out of three days. That's not really that good. You may consider removing this player. So again, this is why doing a te doing tech audits for tech donation audits is extremely important. And trust me, something every officer, in my opinion, should learn how to do because it's really easy and it doesn't take too much time. Uh, the next thing would be doing things like checking your inactivity report, right? So again, for some of you that may know, I believe it's like, I don't know, I can't remember if it's once a week or if um, it's it's once you start getting some inactive players after a couple days, um, you'll eventually get an inactivity report that's generated for officers and leaders, right? It's good to check that. You can also check that against your tech donation audit as well um, to kind of figure out players that you need to remove or whatever the process is. If you guys message them first and say, hey, you know, I noticed that, <clears throat> and this is, I think, good tip too as well. If, I think it's good to have a group chat, like a time off chat. So if you have players that are going to be away, they can post there, then you can update that in your officer chat so you can keep up with people. Excuse me, it's very important to make sure that you're kind of doing your due diligence. Right. If someone is <clears throat> if someone is just blatantly inactive and they have like five donations over four or five days, yeah, okay, they're and and you know they haven't messaged anyone. Um, again, that's why it's good to set these chats up early. Also, communicate that information to people and say like, look, you need to let someone know if you're going to be off, so that way we don't accidentally remove you. Right. If we see that you're not tech donating or we get an inactivity report um, that has your name on it, tell them to message you. If they don't then you can kind of go about the process in which you and your alliance or your leader um, has kind of figured out for your group. Most of the time it might just end up with you removing them because they aren't active at that point, but it is good to kind of set up some of these things ahead of time. <clears throat> Next is going to be talking about, and I know we briefly did this for role actions, right? Whatever your role action is, make sure that you're doing that, right? Make sure you're following up on that. If it's diplomacy, you need to be reaching out uh, right or checking messages from other leaders that are in the kingdom uh, or ones that are in your province you need to be reaching out to them building rapport if you're doing war you need to be thinking about writing mails coming up with tips um, tips and tricks things that you can send out to players so they can be familiar with pvp if you're recruiting right then you need to kind of be following up with any hot leads uh, following up with any leads generating some new leads um, you know potentially looking to recruit more players and whether that be internally or externally uh, if you're someone who does planning, right, you need to kind of figure out what's your flag path, what are you guys going to be doing, right, what kind of text do you might, you know, do you need to hit if you need to go back into flag quantity. These are things that you need to figure out, um, right, and really be on top of, right, what's your income that you're getting from current deposits, uh, right, how many flags can you can you build right across your next 10 to 20 flags. Really think these, thing, uh, think these things through by doing your research and kind of getting a good plan together. Uh, now, if you're doing things like doing things like events, right, you might want to figure out, okay, well, hey, how can I? What, can, what kind of fun events can we do on the kingdom where we can kind of engage some players? You know, then what kind of rewards can we provide? How can we give people shout outs? Um, right, maybe maybe we shout out people that are like top in the rankings, right, for the alliance. I mean, there are creative ways and things that you can do to engage players a lot more. Right, these are some things to think about. Uh, and then I, I, I want to say that the probably the last thing here, I know we touched on kind of sending mails and the importance of that. Um, and I, I do believe every alliance officer, um, including the leader, right, should be or be able to send mails out to the alliance um, and especially doing it in a very consistent way where it's not just a ginormous wall of text, but really kind of learning how to send mails. Trust me when I say if you can learn a little bit of like the HTML code, it's super easy. I mean, you can Google that as well. Just learn like, hey, send you know, use HTML code and rock mails, right? And rise of kingdom mails. I mean, something like that, you'll easily pull up some stuff. But the important part here is to, uh, and I know I touched on this as well before, outside of the mails, is communicating. Make sure that you communicate. Have conversations, you know, have meetings with your management team. Um, and, if, and if not, maybe if you're an officer, offer to set those up. Offer to take the lead and be proactive 
and saying, hey, I'd love to help schedule our next officer meeting, right? Is that okay if I do that? Go to your lead, right? Again, sometimes being proactive and, and paying attention to things that you see, right, that could be done that can help, right? Sometimes it just requires you to go and ask, right? And say, hey, I'd love to help out in this area. Or maybe just do something that, that obviously isn't necessarily something impactful and say like, hey, I, I put together this thing or I prepped this doc, right? I wanted to show it to you to see um, if it's okay if I do this, right? Or what are, you, what are your thoughts on it first? And more often than not, if you really put some quality work in, majority of the time you are going to be met and reciprocated with an equal level of response, right? And usually it's an appreciative response and more of an acknowledgement like, yeah, hey, this looks great. Uh, maybe some edits are need to be done or maybe not. Right now you can go forward, right, and do that, right? Keep me up to date. A lot of times having a good relationship with your lead is just keeping your lead up to date, communicating, letting them know, right, once you kind of have a direction, once you've been given a role, right, take some things in baby steps, right? Don't become an officer and then you're kind of acting like a leader, right? That's a pro tip I'll give <laughs> is really understand that you are an officer. Even if you've had leadership experience before, whether it's in this game or another game, remember you are an officer first and foremost, right? You are there to support, not necessarily to lead, right? And there's an asterisk there because sure, maybe you can be like, you know, a, a guardian lead or something like that as an officer when you guys are doing those. But outside of that, right, really, really kind of know, you know, how can you best serve the alliance in your position, right? Um, and I think those are very important things is that as an officer, and, and I'm going to hammer this home away as well, right? Remember, you are an extension of the leader, right? Whatever the, the, the alliance's goals are, the vision, the plan the lead has, right? First and foremost, you are hopefully there to support that. Right, you want to help the alliance because you like playing there. You like you like socializing with the friends. Um, you, hopefully, you like the lead enough to want to consider to be an officer, and you you know believe in kind of the direction they're going. Right, for why you want to be an officer to help support, and you're happy to be able to contribute to that goal. Right, to that initiative. So yeah, I think that probably rounds out where I'm at. How long? I don't even know where I'm at right now in my timing here. 27 minutes. Awesome. Yeah, man, I'm, I'm telling you guys, you know, I've seen some of these other, you know, kind of management videos out there. And uh, though I think they kind of do a, a good, if not decent job at giving you kind of a quick overview, I really like doing these deep dives because I think it's very important that if you are going to be a lead, if you're going to be an officer, like in this case, for, for that we've gone over for this video, it's important to have a good, very good full understanding of everything that really goes into it, right? So you, and also I hope that for people that watch this video will have a better idea on how to act appropriately, professionally as an officer, how to conduct themselves, how you can really support and really be there for your lead with the best intentions. And with that being said, that is pretty much it for me. Of course, I'd love to know what you guys think in the comments down below. Did you enjoy this video? Some of the things I talked about, right? Do you, do you think there were some things that we could add later? Again, I'm sure there's probably a few things I missed out on too as well. I really wanted to try and, I, I like to write my outlines down in advance just in case, but hope we did a pretty good job. So let me know what you guys think in those comments down below. That is it for me. Until next time, we will catch you later.